All right, welcome back. Let's... Let me organize here. Okay, here we go. Step two. And this is the one we want. Okay. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> all right. So by now you should have a uh, really a strong understanding on the, the function and variation of uh, circadian clocks. Alright, so we remember that uh, we can define um, different cycles as exogenous, which come from the environment. Uh, a really good example are the seasons. And can anyone tell us what we call the cycles that come from within the organism? Anyone, anyone. What do we call the other type of cycle? Endogenous. Yes, excellent, right? Endogenous are coming from within the organism. And of course, you should know by now that there is a combination that are both exogenous and endogenous cycles that can drive the function of an organism. All right, so for the next um, you know, few minutes, I do want to ask you all to identify the following pictures. So we'll spend maybe a couple of minutes on each, discuss it within your table, and then perhaps we'll hear from certain groups to argue what type of cycles we are looking at. Okay. So I'm just going to show you a picture. Uh, we'll take a couple of minutes. Each table will discuss it, and then we'll hear from all the tables. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see the first one right here. So again, talk about it with your table for about two minutes, and then we'll argue what type of cycle this is. So you want to ask, is this endogenous, exogenous, a combination, or is this a circadian clock? All right, start talking. Oh, yeah, that written our chase.
Maybe another minute or two, and people can start sharing their responses. And the Della Pacamachi in Chinangin, stay chill and it is over. I need some curry to the carriage on the decision and degrees. And this time, I would like every group, every table to. to you know, share with us what they think. Hello. Yes. Oh, yeah. The group thinks think that this is a combination of exogenous and endogenous. Well, so first of all, yes. I what are they looking at? Are they sleeping or what are they doing? Uh huh. Yeah, so it could definitely depend on whether they're just sleeping, and we don't know, right? They could just be sleeping for a couple of hours, or just like the bear in the picture that we saw, they could also be hibernating for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So this could very well be a simple circadian clock based on the sleep-wake cycle, or it could be a complex exogenous combination with the seasons if they are indeed hibernating. And just so you know, this type of species of squirrel does also hibernate just like the bear. They do sleep for many, many months. So I welcome all of you when you are in your environment, outdoors, walking, 
and you see, you know, plants, their leaves are falling in the trees, or you see animals going through their cycles. Think about this on your mind. What type of cycle am I seeing? What type of cycle is this? Good. So let's go to the next one. Now, this one is a little bit tricky, so I'll explain it without giving you too much information. So in this picture, we are seeing a person sneezing, right? It could be an allergy. So this one is a little bit more complicated and you can see all kinds of things, you know, makeup, uh, medicine, right? Uh, viruses, bacteria, uh, the sun, right? So think about it. Talk about it, and then we'll definitely see what people say. And in this one, I do want several groups to share their information. Now, so discuss that in a couple of minutes. We'll go back and share your responses.
maybe another minute and people can start sharing their um, responses. Okay. Uh, the thing is, effect is due to the change in temperature or like going from cold to warm. Very good, right? So, what type of cycle is this? Exogenous or endogenous? The Tanda de su de chiche in bache, no che you do you zara, tanda de su nyama de ja nyama de ge ane tru si bachi le tru di l ane tatama mobachi le wara, what de na gonu do na wu di sare so si do. No that's all. Uh um uh, exogenic. Right. Mainly. right. So and also is because what what the thing is because of the sun and then this uh, the temperatures are higher, so Lots of smells, many meaning lots of uh, micro going right, in. Right, right. Oh, so even they, even yeah. the pollen, right? Even the pollen yeah. has to be sent. Absolutely. Uh, anyone else want to share? Group, dimba, dimba. Nanzu. Oh, nanzu. Ruwa na lo di chungu ruwa. Chige kodi sares. Kain zina da di miri na de doa na ni ni kab jao gaya da me sa gaya da ta da 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 chie jora. Uh huh. Oh, di tengi dus. Yeah, the thing is exogenic, and because uh, the, the person is sick, and also we see there's medicines, medications of this, the person needs to take medications to get recovery. Right. And that would also be exogenous, right, coming from yeah. the environment. Yeah. Now, let me ask all of you, um, are we all equally allergic to the pollen out there? Thank you. It's a time to pollen, and no, no, right. So, is the intensity of allergies also dependent on our genes? And that's a question that anyone can, can answer. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. No. Right? So the genes in our body can also have a function on how we respond to allergies. And that becomes an endogenic cycle, right? That depends uh -huh. on our own organism. So what we see here is really a complex mixture of endogenous with our genes, endogenous with the temperature and the environment, perhaps the, the, the presence of viruses, bacteria, and many other things that can drive those allergies. 
Good. Uh, for the next one, uh, I'm going to just very briefly mention something. We have this picture of a human. And how often do you feel your stomach moving, all those gastric, uh, gastric juices moving within your body? Mm -hmm. So think about this, you know, think about when you start having all that movement in your stomach and Talk about it within your tables, and after a few minutes, we'll come back and we'll share our ideas on what type of cycle this is. <clears throat> that what as they are talking i'm gonna step up for one minute i'll be right back i'm gonna get more water sure 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 So maybe another minute or two minutes. We're done. Don't come out. You come in. Yes, yes. Good to know. Yes.
All right. So who wants to share? A couple of tables want to share with us. Yeah, yeah, Nila Ura. The Togo Todi and the Tanachit de Togo is a ra. The Togo City is a do, and a poor never a ra. What did it all the world? Uh huh. And the Nochera. Uh huh. The effect that you have mentioned that, that the, the liquid. Uh, the, the juice moving around, he said, uh, um, uh, in three different instance, inst instances. Because first, when you're hungry, you feel that you can feel it's moving. The, I guess the juice is moving around. Also, like when you have a loose motion, you have uh, like um, not feeling well, and you have loose motion. And also, you have a, a, a stomach uh, a pain that you are not feeling well there. You feel that. Um, uh, that ill effect of moving sure. gastric juice in the stomach. Sure. So, uh, would that be an exogenous or endogenous cycle? Yes. 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 Table one. Manju Jeeva ina the shogi music sorge registra shogi. Anta kana si ani kabre yaan twingi me ki yaan kaise anta robaji anta phasa jadi dus or twingi me le dus twingi je main ba. Usually we feel that usually we feel that in the morning, but sometimes like <laughs> we can feel pretty much all other times. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question for all of you. That feeling of hunger, does it ever become exogenous or is it always endogenous? Anyone, anyone, does it ever become exogenous? Yes, it can be. How so? For, ex for example, uh, when we see someone is eating very delicious food, <laughs> just by observing that, we also, you know, start, you know, hunger, hungry. And that was my point, right? Uh, we could be walking around, uh, not really feeling hungry, but perhaps we walk near a restaurant or we see someone eating. That is an environmental cue that is going to kickstart the cycle of the juices moving and then we'll start feeling hungry. <laughs> And this is an important thing that I, I know it sounds funny, but really think about it seriously. Because the, the, the feeling of hunger is a genetic you know, instinct within our bodies, right? But there are moments that can also be driven by the environment. Very good. And next one, you should all be able to tell me what type of cycle. I know we're looking at this opinion rhythm, the sleep wake. But is this endogenous or exogenous? Ah, that and that is how much you wish it is. Take up some banana and so get you a set on me, get it on the shijak or this. Take up the chicher way, not it is. And you all should be able to tell me whether this is endogenous or exogenous, since this is all we've been talking about in the last three classes. Ah, that David, the talk has the top on similar and that's what you put the shijak that I used to touch it to time again. Table, table four. Table four. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I have one question. Yes. So the question is, uh, can we define all actions by uh, circadian rhythm? 
Can we define all actions? Can you all repeat the last part? No, but by secretary rhythm. So Cardia rhythm. What, what really I wanted, I, I'm a little confused with the secretary rhythm because you know, like it seems to be like uh, all actions can be like a uh, uh, secretary rhythm. Is it true? Uh, no, not all actions are circadian, right? Okay, because okay. Not, then, all, not all actions are driven by night and day, right? Okay. Some so cycles if, are driven for uh, with longer periods beyond night or day. ただでかすがすぐ金尊コードがかすすかでアルゴリズムさんね金尊コードでマンチシチチニシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシシ
Uh, he, uh, my my question is, uh, you have, especially regarding the circadian rhythm, you have uh, the 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 uh, the effect or the <laughs> the sun is the main thing in fact. And uh, for for a blind people, uh, is there any kind of for compared to a normal people for the blind people, is there any kind of a difference in the uh, hormonal uh, release and uh, you know, that is a very good question. I need to explore it. I don't, there has to be some difference uh, between, uh, you know, blind people also sleep, right? They follow this sleeping pattern. Um, I would need to see the difference between a person with a full sight and a blind person to see what are the differences in melatonin, for example, in how melatonin is released at night. I would need to research that. That is an excellent question. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the suprachiasmic canal, the, the nucleus, right, that is um, affected by the sunlight is attached to the optic channel. So I would need to see, I would need to read what happens when we lose our sight, how that changes the ability of the suprachiasmic nucleus to be influenced by sunlight. I would need to research it. Uh-huh. <laughs> ตะตีอ๋อจิกะจิดาอันนี้พม่าดอจิกิมบะอีนะอันนี้มีชะกยาวะดอจิกิมบะอีนะปูกยาวะดอจิกิมบะอีนะอันนี้โคดะเอ่
I wouldn't really call it a cycle. Uh, it's more of a driven effect between the genetics and our diet, right? And our diet depends on the culture, really. You could go to a population that happens to be very high altitude and have a very specific diet that perhaps is very high in, 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 in sugars or fat, right? So you, we, we may take that diet and we may get fatter. If we change to another population, to another habitat, and we change our diet, we're going to get thinner. So I wouldn't really call it a cycle, but I would call it a consequence of a diet. Mm -hmm. And but that's a really, really good question. I, I will think about that one as well. Uh, we have another picture and maybe for another minute. Uh, what are you seeing here and what type of cycle is this? Are we looking at a circadian rhythm cycle? Are we looking at an exogenous, endogenous? What are we looking at here? And I'll tell you what this is. This is the migration of birds from one portion of our planet to a different portion of our planet. And they're migrating. What type of cycle is this? Yeah, talk about it for a minute and then let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. Tawa, are you in Atlanta or are you in India right now? In Atlanta. In Atlanta, okay. Yes. So we're very, very close to each other. It's I really agree. amazing how this works, right? Yeah, we are neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Giving our, our other translator a break from translating, I see. Yeah. Oh, it's good, good. Uh -huh. So what do you all think? What are we looking at here? What type of cycle is this? Anyone want to share? Sonia, yes. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yes. Good. No, good. Oh, good. 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 
I would agree, right? This is based on the seasons, right? The temperature, right? And you have this large migration, large movement of, of the birds that by instinct, right? They're following this pattern, uh, going perhaps to a warmer temperature. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this one, uh, we have two more pictures before we jump into our activity. In this picture, uh, we are seeing what we call a horseshoe crab, which is a special kind of crab that um, when the tide comes in in the ocean, they all come to the sand to lay their eggs, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the high tide is also in tune with the moon phase. Mm -hmm. So think about this, discuss it, and let us know what type of cycle, endogenous, exogenous, Perhaps circadian, right? Tell us what you think you're looking at. That other day, by now, I saw the big singing on the and a tagging me by like door, horse you like door, tagging me by a doy or two with the cigarette, I make the cigarette, the coin by now, but not in your dearest. The day by now, go Kangila thing, Kangila Raligoris, and I saw the Tioa, but do you love your, do you love, do you love the Shuchampion Stambalani for? ジャンスウソカラヤトスアツテヨンゴレスティラブデンアツゲダワゲチェヌトンデワヨアワオテオテデワヨレスタコツトステヨンソカラテヨンソカテヨンチェラアネアコツウソカラヨンデタンダコ
I could imagine perhaps uh, certain organisms living very deep in the ocean where there is no light, right? We just don't have light. Uh, you probably don't have circadian clocks because you're not exposed to sunlight. But still, somewhere in the chemistry of those organisms, uh, in their in their processes, they still follow certain types of cycles. Going back to our going back to our picture here, you know, we can think about this as a circadian clock because this is driven by day night, right? You have the night, you have the moon, which is pulling in uh, because of this gra gravitational force. It's pulling in the water. You have the high tide. And you have this congregation, this sort of mini migration of animals into the beach. So this is certainly a circadian rhythm clock. And this last one, Miki, this a question. Question, okay? Yeah. Oh, near to what day? Then that, uh, when that Simjin or Niku on this number, in the Simjin, the Niku de Gabla, any Namchi, you know, that Satan did in Bayan Niku, Chigongora, did that Chijin or Shagador, Chijin. Did my in Bayan. Korang itu menjadi lelon, di kabel menjadi lelon, di ni menjadi lelon di kabel yang aku nangje cari oda. Tadi ini di lelai cijeda nangje ni kacah oda, di lelai ni kuyen di la. Di ini sama tadi dah cari pena nepo orang di sama. Tadi cijeda kena siapa ina kena cari ina sego. Tadi tiba di kaji ni nak aku di lelai ni semuanya di tapa poh orang di sama yang nangro di menjadi lelai orang kau le. Di lelai menjadi lelai orang di menjadi lelai di nangje cari oda. Tadi ni ni kau ibu sura, cijeda nangje ni kau ibu sura. Odi cari cari mana sura tiba ini. Okay. Uh, uh, my question is regarding the bird, bird uh, migration. Over there, you have mentioned that it's as a genic, but uh, <clears throat> for instance, if you go to sleep, I think it has like factors that can be as a genic and endogenic both because sure, absolutely of, yeah, because of the weather or the uh, uh, everything outside can affect also like uh, to go to sleep in our absolutely. in our body. We have like hormones released also absolutely. for. Bird migration, and they can be like uh, hormones released <laughs> because of the 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 external uh, factors. So that can be both for the combination of exogenic and endogenic. Absolutely, the process itself of migration is exogenic, but when they migrate, they still have to sleep, they still have to rest, and that is driven by other cycles. And they can be circadian. So that's a very good observation. Uh, Excellent. And for the last one, uh, this one reminds me of a little activity that I did with the monks uh, when I was in India, uh, the last, um, you know, in 18 and 19, those two years, uh, we did an activity where we planted certain seeds in different types of soil uh, with different, you know, abilities to germinate. So think about this activity. What type of cycle do we have here? Endogenous, exogenous, circadian, what do we have? Now, 
so think about it in about a minute or two. Let us know what you think. I can't believe the time is almost over. These three that three guys have been wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to miss them all. Mm -hmm. I really hope to be able to go back to India soon. Yeah, hopefully next next year. Uh, are there plans to, to bring people back? Oh yeah, probably next probably. year. Yeah. Fingers crossed. So what do you all think? What are we looking at here? Kare sangudos. Ani da ngaso. Chijito mo je ni gare do. Ni gare sha sa. Ni lo chijito na je ni ga e sare es. Both are saying that this combination. Chijito chike. Nange chije me do. Chije ni mala te go do a ti tu ni mala ti je no je do la rizi gu ani yo cha shibuzu de ani cha go do no le ani it's both combination because the as a genic because of the sunlight is needed over here to let it grow and uh, endogenic because the genes are acting on it to grow. Sure. So, yeah. I would take it even a step further and maybe switch them uh, and say that the sun is exogenic uh, because it is circadian. You have the sun and the night and plants only grow with sunlight, right? Uh, they germinate with sunlight. But we also have this exogenous uh, driver because we have different soil types and not, we, we have different types of germination, right? Not all the plants are germinating equally. And I do agree that the genetics also play a part. That would be the indigenous part. Uh, endogenous part uh, where the genetics may allow certain plants to grow better than others, but that will be interacting with the environment, with the type of soil, and how much sunlight they receive. So, absolutely, you have both. Excellent. 
So this brings us to 12 p.m. So we have 30 minutes to, you got it. We're going to finish our graphs and we're going to share uh, what we have for our activity, for our pulse and our sleep wake cycle. So um, let's, you know, let's get a couple of groups that maybe want to share with us what they have. And at the very end, I have another small activity with just a couple of questions that we can ask. So I'm going to stop sharing for one second, and I'm going to open up. Let's open up first our pulse rate, our heart, heart rate uh, activity, and that would be pulse rate activity. And I see a lot of different teams. You even put your name, so that's really, really good. So um, let's see what people want to share with us. Who wants to go first? We're a pulse rate activity. This is really good, by the way. I'm looking at all the different graphs. This is great. So maybe uh, maybe uh, table team four with Ani, Tashi, Lobsan, Dabka, Halian. Maybe you want to talk for a minute or two about your, your results? Can you, can you show that as well? The what? Uh, Migo, Migo, can you show that the screen? Can you share this? Yes, yes, of course, of course, absolutely. Thank you. Request Shiba, what request Shiba Chesuge to us or the motor church has? Nice. So do you want to, who, this group, do you okay. want to share with us what you did? So uh, this is a, the heart rate, heart rate uh, activity. So the each line represent our member. Can you hear? Yes, yes, thank you. Yes. And so do you see your circadian clock? Uh, oscillation throughout the different days? Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, so this is if what you I can make it, in, if you can make it bigger, then I think it's better. Bigger. Okay. Give me one second here. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Like that. Okay. Yeah. That looks really, really good. So you could certainly see, you know, the fluctuations um, across mm -hmm. different hours, different days. And this is really good because you could see the difference between different people, right? Yeah. And uh, this line representing the, this orange line, and that will probably be a uh, Dagpa. Uh, he had a much lower uh, pulse rate than anyone else across two different days. Yeah. yeah, that's very, very good. 
Uh, let's go to, thank you. Thank you for, this is exactly what I was looking for with this type of activity. This is uh -huh. really awesome. Okay, how about at table five? We have Jampa, Gyatso, Wanchuk. Three people did this one together. So do you want to talk about um, some of the differences here? And it's interesting because now all the three lines, they never meet, right? They're all different from each other. Even though they both, all three of them have slight fluctuations. Uh -huh. Very good. So, uh, do, does this group want to maybe say a couple of things about what they did? Uh huh. That the Jesus did call a current or which he meant the current he meant the most which he is a Jesus no Michka. Ah, the level that the. We measure the poles by uh, uh, how much poles we record it within uh, one minute. Do me a favor, uh, and, and maybe the people in the room can help me with this. Raise your hand if you took your poles with the neck. Uh huh. So I want to see whether people use their neck or their wrist. What was the more popular uh, method? Neck or uh, neck, neck, neck. Oh, okay. And who took, their, who took their their pulse by their by their wrist? So uh, more people more. more people took it by the wrist and the neck. Yes. Yes. More oh, more are done with wrist. Interesting, because I find it a lot easier for me to take it on the neck, but that's just me, right? <laughs> so here we have a nice graph. No, that's very good. We have a nice graph uh, having three people, uh, a difference across the different days, but they're all different from each other. That's very, very interesting. And this one has a slight different visual, still works. Uh, perhaps you want to talk about this for um, a minute? Mm -hmm. Group number six. Table six. Different, different color represent different people. And what, what, that, this is very interesting. You decided to use a bar instead of a line, right? And is it, you, you can still see the difference uh, across um, the different times. Perhaps it's a little bit more difficult to look at the difference when you're using bars, right? Which is why we, we tend to use more straight lines. But this also works really nicely. And, and thank you for your for your work. This is really good. Uh -huh. 
Excellent. Um, okay, let's go to our awake activity. And we'll do this for another five minutes or so, and then we'll jump into our last activity for the day. So, um, okay, so perhaps Annie, two Annies, do you want to share what you did for this one? Uh huh. Anila Nidus, Chirani Karidrimati Motochi <laughs> so um, I think you know that in here uh, in the uh, red one is represent my friend and the blue one is mine so, <laughs> so there's no big changes in uh, my friend uh, the counting right but there's big changes in my one you know, I like can both, see that. Day, yeah. both day, you know, it, from the first time is it go like down and the second is it go more like higher. It's a little bit higher. You know, like when you do it again, it's uh, getting like better and better and more. <laughs> first, I think. Yeah. No, this is really good. And, you know, you, you could also have a competition with each other to see who has the better math skills. Right. I did this. I am not very good at this activity. I, I'm very bad at this activity. Uh -huh. Uh, group six, perhaps. I, I, I don't understand what Neil means. That means no. So, so it, it was simple uh, data that we didn't flow. Oh, okay. So it's a point of data that was not uh, introduced. Okay, got it, got it. No, this is good. And again, you show a very nice flow uh, across the different days. Um, so certainly in the morning, right, uh, you're going to do a little bit worse than during the day, right? Between 2 and 4 p.m., a lot higher. Um, but what is really interesting, so you did this activity much faster in the in the morning hours between uh, at 8 a.m and at midnight uh, and then the later in the day it took a little bit longer for the activity is that correct mm -hmm. Uh, it, it depends on the how the person calculate the data. Some person calculate the data by their uh, by their heart, but some use calculator. So what do you mean use a calculator? You're not supposed to use a calculator. <laughs> It's supposed to be brain. It's supposed to be brain activity, not calculator activity. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. Yeah, some good. of us, uh, some of us use like mobile calculator to calculate the numbers. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, no, this is really good. I I'm very happy that you all uh, enjoy doing this. Um, <laughs> so next time you do this, do not, I repeat, do not use a calculator. <laughs> okay, 
Very good, my friends. I am very proud of all of you. Uh, you know, I thank you for, for taking part of this activity. Here, you could essentially visualize your own circadian rhythm within your brain activity. And that is a very important thing that we can do. And for the last few minutes, we're almost out of time. We have about 10, 15 more minutes. Uh, let's jump into our day five afternoon activity where we just have a simple list. And I want to really get to see how much you learned about experimenting circadian clocks. So we looked at our pulse rate. We looked at brain activity. How else can we measure circadian clocks? And just list as many as you can per table. I also put the link on the chat in case anybody has needs access, but I see people are already joining. So um, yeah, spend about maybe five minutes uh, listing different ways. Don't look at other groups, stay within your group. And then we'll just, you know, share uh, your your uh, responses and see how much you all learned. And perhaps you may inspire me uh, new ways to to study and do activities in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah, spend a few minutes, then we'll share. Uh, maybe five, five minutes, I would say. Yeah, five minutes, yes. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so people are responding. Let me see. There we go. <laughs> Eye blinking. <laughs> Breathing rate. Breathing rate is very good. Body temperature. Yes, 
Now they're making, they're giving really good suggestions here. Couple more minutes. Measure melatonin, measure oxygen, counting breath, eye blinking, body temperature. Brain activity, very good. Sugar level. Yeah. EEG, very good. Very good responses. So maybe uh, in 30 seconds, people can start sharing. Okay, who wants to share? Maybe um, can, does one group want to share their answers? Very good response. <laughs> Uh-huh. 
Sanje to Chris. You know, not yours, you go, you know, she was your what the Latinia, you don't go to the other Sanje to Chris. Carcoma, the new Carcoma to your what the Latinia, Nanga Nitus and Connecticut, and the Jerome Hago Sanje to Chris. Okay, okay, uh, Migo, can you click on the group one? Run the first one, yes. Yes, first one, yes. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that, uh, the feeling sleepy and blood pressure, urination, and hungry, body temperature, and feeling tiredness or, or feeling uh, thirsty. Thirst. Yeah. And you know, thirsty goes with urination. The more you drink, the more you urinate, right? Uh -huh. uh, very, very good, very good answers, my friends. Uh, uh -huh. I'm going through all the different. Groups. Thank you. Yeah, group two chose oxygen consumption in the brain. That's very clever. Uh, that's something that we can also measure. Uh, that's the you know the, the saturation in the brain. Certainly important. Activeness, uh, that's what we did with our math. Uh, so you could essentially make a new experiment that, that's testing how active uh, we are. I blink, uh, I could see I blink being more of, more of a quick cycle that you could measure uh, absolutely um, in, in short uh, spurts of time absolutely uh, perhaps we blink differently in different times of the day i don't know if we do Mm-hmm. <laughs> My friends, this is really, really good. And you know, thank you for, for your responses. I believe just by looking at how you're all responding that you, you all certainly are able to you know, make sense of a, a circadian clock, what it means and the, 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 the process of a circadian clock. Uh, so now that we you know come to an end we have one more minute uh, I, I really just want to you know once again let me let me stop sharing this that way i can just see all of you um let me just um you know once more say that it has been a real honor to to be working with you this is by far one of my favorite activities that i that i have done academically working with the monastics. Um, uh, I really hope uh, perhaps next summer, if things improve, with the pandemic, I can even visit and teach you all in person. And that would be a dream come true if I was able to go. And, and with this, I just want to thank you and uh, say goodbye. And um, I hope to be able to sign in for the next few classes in the next couple of days. I, I may be able to, but I'm going to miss you all uh, dearly. And I hope that we'll be in touch and uh, we get to work uh, again. Uh -huh.
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you.